Okay, continuing on. It's kind of hard to see because, of course, these guys who come up with their PDFs don't think about the right colors for highlighting. But up here is Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. And the 32 syllables down here in the bottom in verse 5 is corresponding to when Paul layers his text on top of Matthew 24, verse 5, he's layering that text. Okay? The idea, again, is the contrast for the Christian who's actually learning and living on Bible versus the one who's not. And the one who's not is actually becoming deceived. And everybody's saying that they're the Christ, that, you know, the Christ is back, second coming is here, or the rapture is here. All those people are going to get sucked into that during this time. And the time in question is, well, just for round numbers, 77 AD, because in Paul it's AD for sure. 77 AD down to 109 AD, now highlighted, unfortunately, in black. Okay? That's corresponding in the lower window to verse 5 that's highlighted in yellow by anoninomino. Now, I had covered that, but what I didn't cover was the aspect of what Christ is saying about how Christians are going to be deceived in the sense of not merely, you know, being out of doctrine and therefore mistaking people saying, I'm Christ. That's not all that goes on during this time. And we have a lot of writing by the so-called bilious, totally apostate church fathers who by the, you know, ignorant of today are held up as spiritual giants. And if you actually read what the so-called church fathers wrote, you'll throw up, okay? So I needed to sort of briefly cover, because you can read this on your own at Christian, earlychristianwritings.com or ccel.org. You can read the Christian fathers during this time and see for yourself how screwball they were. And that's important because it helps you understand what Christ was warning about and how it went wrong. Church goes vitally wrong. Okay? The upper dark blue text, I mean light blue text, is what was supposed to be in our minds during the period from 77 AD to 109 AD. But during that same period, especially starting in um, about 96, AD and even far worse by 109 we have the so-called church father writings which show that they didn't even know what the gospel was they thought that you got saved by works they thought that you were supposed to um, what do you want to call it die for Christ it's as goofball as you can get now, the writers of this period that you can actually check so you can see the prophetic fulfillment of what Paul's got highlighted there in blue that should have happened, and he's sort of satirizing those who didn't do it, and what Christ is directly warning not to do, which they did do, you can see the proof of that prophecy being fulfilled. If you go to earlychristianwritings.com, ccel.org, and you start looking up some of the, those people who were alive in writing from, say, 98 to 109. Now, there are principally three. You got Clement. You got, I think he belongs to that period, Justin Martyr. He might be a little later. And you got a really disgusting guy named Ignatius. Ignatius was very prolix. And you also have Polycarp. There's, you know, there's a debate about whether the writings that we got for these people were actually written by them. But it doesn't matter. They were writings that everybody praised as being spiritual giants for that time. And when you read those writings, you'll realize they're doing exactly what Christ warned against. Exactly. They are exactly astray. Completely astray. Planao means to go astray, to wander, that the Hebrew equivalent of that is the word Hebrew. Okay, it means to wander. Whereas what they were supposed to be doing was charting their time 
based on this timeline Paul provided, but it didn't. Now, that doesn't mean all believers were like that. Actually, the few, it's all Christ already said in the seed parable, 1 to 3 percent of us are actually growing, and the 97 to 99 percent of us are not. Okay? And when he says you do a crop of a hundredfold, that means that there were 99 other seeds, believers, who weren't growing, and so you had to produce a hundred times as much. Except that you don't produce it. A tree doesn't actually produce fruit. The fruit happens to the tree. So production happens by God in you. That's the whole theme of the Bible. Okay, but it only happens in one out of a hundred of us. Or one out of thirty of us at best. So this is a story of how church went bad. And Christ already knows that. That's why he's warning. That's why his first warning here is, look, I'm gone. And a whole lot of people are going to say, I came back. Don't be deceived. But of course we were. The flip side of being deceived about Christ being back. Because not everybody had that kind of, what do you want to call it, screwball thought pattern. They had other screwball thought patterns. And when you read Clement, it was a power grab over the Corinthians. When you read Ignatius, or yeah, Ignatius, it was, oh, I want to suffer for Christ. And so what Ignatius does is he finds out where Trajan is located, because Trajan's the emperor at this time, goes running up to Trajan and says, I'm a Christian, you have to kill me. That's how goofball Christianity had already become. Now John had written Revelation in 88 AD. In 88 AD, Domitian was busy persecuting people in his own family, people in his own circle. He wasn't busy persecuting Christians. But it's real easy to imagine that John would have been exiled by some local magistrate who was trying to get in good with Domitian by sort of like, well, you're going to persecute your people, I'm going to persecute people I don't like here too, and then I'm going to brag to you about it so you'll give me more money. I mean, that's not a hard thing to imagine. So John got exiled to Patmos during that time, about 88, 89 AD. That's when he datelines his own book of Revelation. You know, every Bible book has its own dateline in it. You don't have to, you know, depend on the scholars, although it's not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying that this is, this is better proof, okay? And this, then the scholars can go back and look where the rest of the evidence is and they'll be able to prove it better. But the point here is that Christ is saying, you're going to be deceived. In this particular example, he's saying, being deceived that Christ is returned. But there are many kinds of deception that Christianity went through during this time. Many kinds. And that's why Revelation 1 through 3, which is written in 88 AD, okay, right here, and Agape, right during this period, this is when Revelation is written, about the love of God and about the failure of church because the millennium was supposed to have begun had there been no church in 90, what we call 94 AD and therefore the tribulation was supposed to have started in 987 AD and John is writing a year after that to explain why it didn't and then Revelation 1 through 3 is the indictment against how church has gone astray so you see this text is tying prophetically to what we will later see you know in the Bible for the same time period and here specifically what we'll see in Revelation for the period that it spans from um, 88 AD until 109 okay because 88 to 109 actually this is starting at 77 goes all the way through here in Paul Paul's been dead Paul died in 68 Christ is talking here in 30, so this is all prophetical. By the time John writes, it's historical. Okay? So it's kind of easy to check how bad church got. And of course, you got the book of stupid acts of the apostles, including Paul, to show you how bad we got just after 30 AD even. So it was kind of under easy to understand how by 88 AD we're too far gone. And why in, a, a, I'm not really sure if it was 109 or 106, Ignatius decides he's going to run up to Trajan, confess that he's a Christian, because that was a death penalty, okay? 
and then Trajan really didn't want to enforce that law but it's in order to get rid of Ignatius he says fine go go to Rome and go get yourself killed by the lions now that's a 20 day trip from where you know Antioch where he met Trajan okay that's a 20 day trip in those days by boat Ignatius takes six months to go there and he writes letter after letter after letter about how proud he is he's going to die for, 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 for Christ. Excuse, excuse me. <coughs> I swallowed wrong. About how proud he is that he's going to die for Christ. That's how low Christianity is by the, the time of the text that you see highlighted. And that's by the end of 109 AD. Okay, so Christianity is bad. We got a satire on Christianity going on about how wandering it is. Not just with respect to false Christs, but with respect to, hi, you could be before him in love. You've been ordained from the foundation of the earth into heirship, sonship through Jesus Christ. And then into him according to. And that's where the text stops to meet with Matthew 5 down here. And the last word in Matthew, uh, Matthew 24, 5. The last word in Matthew 24, 5 is plan de susin, which is the whole theme of the period. You know, being deceived. Notice how in Paul's text, the parallel text that he's laying on top of it for the same years is Ace Autonka. Now that's really cute because <coughs> Ace into, toward, for, because of. Auton, him, accusative case. Kata is the whole word. Maybe you don't go the whole way. Because you're blane susin. You're deceived. Isn't that cute? See how Paul's satirical precision on the Matthew 24 5 text is so awesome. Especially in light of the fact that Christians were going wacko. And we got evidence of that in writing, first in the Bible, and then in people like stupid, disgusting. Pepto Bismol, the verbal scriptural diarrhea, Clement, and then Ignatius, who's so proud of himself dying that he takes six months to go do it, and then um, disgusting anti Semitic Justin Martyr, which I didn't actually cover, but once you read his, his diatribe against tra uh, Trafo, I think it's Trafo or Trifo, you'll realize that Christianity was so anti Semitic. So, of course, it doesn't know anything. Jesus Christ is a Jew. If you're anti-Semitic, guess what? You're not in fellowship with God. All right, so that explains the time. And it shows in the text as a satire that's very subtle because, again, in the Roman Empire of those days, they had this thing called a crime of maestas. If you spoke against the empire, you were critical. And there is a certain criticism of Trajan going on here. If you're critical or satirical or making fun of the majesty, maestas, of the empire, you could get the death penalty. So they had to be subtle. All right, now that's the end of this increment. I'm going to try to pick up at um, verse 6 in the next increment right here, which, you know, is, is really obvious for the period, okay, 109 to 127. There are about to be wars and rumor, wars. Okay, and rumors of wars is how we use to translate that in the English. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened because during this period we have a switch over from Trajan to Hadrian, and Hadrian was anti Semitic. And he got that way because he had all these fights with the Jews. And this is during the period during which Hadrian rises to power and the empire shrinks. Hadrian's traveling all over the empire just like Trajan did. But one of the things he starts to do is he starts to get into a war with the Jews and the Jews themselves go to war with him, the so-called Kitos War, which starts in 114. Okay, so here we got, you know, this is 109 ending here. Okay, so 
melesete. One, two, three, four. Okay, so 109 and 4 is 113. So right here at da, transition, ha ha ha. Is this clever or what? That's when the Jews start to war in Cyrenaica, which is, um, I'm not pronouncing it right. It's what we call Libya today. And in Syria, which had control over Jerusalem and, and um, what then was called Palestine. And, you know, in various parts of the empire, the Jews were rebelling. And Hadrian had just had enough. Okay, so this builds up to the crisis of the Bar Kokhba Revolution, which occurs right after this 18 and it ends. And what I need to show you is how Paul shows it in the text, and that will be in the next increment.